So we're at the what's called the Eye Cave Beach here in Dunbar due to the eye in the cave at the back um, of us here. This was actually the location for the Dunbar Outdoor Swimming Pool which I believe was one of the largest in Europe at the time. Used to get a lot of um, the people from uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh coming through for the trades fortnight in the summer to spend their holidays here. This was one of the first beaches that I came down to play and to do stone stacking. My mum became the secretary of the swimming club here and taught most of the kids in Dunbar at the time through the 70s and 80s uh, how to swim. I literally grew up on this beach or this area throughout my childhood, coming down every, every day in summer to just swim and hang out at the swimming pool. And now I'm doing it again, but in a different form through stone stacking. So, my, you know, we've got a family connection and heritage with this very piece of land here and this very piece of beach. The swimming pool was eventually taken out due to the tide coming in every year and it cost a lot of money to rebuild it. When that was taken away, uh, this cave area became visible and became a local place for people to come down and spend time here. Dunbar has always been interesting as far as the <coughs> landscape and for myself, I was really into looking at clouds and rocks and discovering shapes and faces within the natural landscape has always been a wee bit of pastime but in 2007 I met a cloud that literally changed my life and it was in the shape of a head just in the clouds and it really got me looking at nature in a whole new light and that also drew me into the eventually made the connection with stone stacking and actually the process of looking for stones when you're stacking it's similar to what I was doing through looking at stones uh, or looking at the stone landscape or you know looking at the clouds to see you know faces and creative things is a similar sort of process. This is also where the first ever European stone stacking competition that I started was developed and will be for uh, next year in 2018 this is where we'll be having the European Stone Stacking Championships again. Finding out that there was such a thing as the World Championships, as soon as I heard about it, I just thought I need to go there. That's I need to meet these artists and to connect with them and just see what's going on. We had already created a stone stacking event, but it just became apparent to me that uh, to create a European version and to uh, bring people to Scotland was kind of the, the it felt like the right thing to do yeah yeah because it's nice that uh the the lano the it's called leaf the lano uh, earth art festival it's been happening for three years now uh, but the the idea and the focus behind it is to expose and uh you know bring to the world what is earth art and they they've done a pretty fantastic job the yeah. last few years of uh, exposing it. Atlanta is just a sm small town like a 3,000 people in the middle of Texas uh -huh. but people from all over the country and now in, in 2017 come all over the world to go to this this gathering. The essence and the the art behind it is is that you know, people get together and connect and, uh -huh. it, and it brings a lot of neat ideas and new possibilities to an art form, which is much more an art form. Yeah. And so that's what brought us together in March uh -huh. and uh, several other guys. And that's what also allowed me to come here and meet several other uh, stone balance and earth artists around Europe. It constantly surprises me. I would have never expected I was teaching or going across the ocean to other parts of the world. It's almost like a calling or Earth's way of um, connecting people, like-minded people together. I think that's something really important as well. It was something that was on my mind creating something called the European Championships when in fact the whole thing about stone balancing is not about competition, it's not about being in competition with people, it's about challenging yourself and to get the balance of 
bringing the artists together, and it is like as Sterling says, is that like it's more like a gathering of friends, and we call it the championships, is a way of promoting it and to bring new people into it. It's an exciting art form and a challenge, but the you know the bottom line with it is that it is about bringing people together, and it's not saying we're better than you or I'm the best in the world or whatever. It's about bringing a group of people that are constantly inspiring people and sharing their love of it and sharing their knowledge. And all the time, all the people that I've, I've met through this are always willing to share their knowledge and share their passion and their joy. And that just, again, makes it more real and the social element. You know, again, with other art forms, you, I don't know with painters now there is a lot of egos and stuff involved and everybody's got an ego to a certain degree but it's really fascinating with stone balancing that through this process of balance and finding balance within yourself that it does diminish the whole ego thing and it is more about your connection to the planet and I think that that's what these gatherings fundamentally are about rather than about a championship thing or whatever but it's exciting it's just a wee challenge and it's a bit of fun as well to see what you can do, you know, and just, yeah, and to have a bit of fun with it rather than taking it too seriously. You know? This was a beach that uh, the father of conservation, John Muir, would have played on as a child. And this landscape must have inspired him and the beauty of the, the natural landscape and the geology must have been a real starting point, you know, to inspire his imagination and creativity. And again, bringing across uh, or Sterling and Travis and hopefully Tim Anderson next year and other American artists to bring them um, to Dunbar and to bring that connection with America and Scotland uh, together for me is, a, yeah, just a really beautiful thing and bringing people of the world together and forming this community of artists that all want to inspire and to share the joy of stone balancing and land art in general. Nature, earth art is inspired from the natural beauty around us. And it's like coming here, for me, it's, it's like paradise for that kind of thing. The stones and just textures, colors, everything you could imagine. There's just endless opportunities for awesome art. And, and for me personally, with my drawings and other kind of art I like to enjoy, I, I see faces and uh, random things form right in front of my eyes. And to, to come here and see the stones and just to open my eyes up to other places around the world where you can see that in the stones, it's, it's really inspiring. I think what, what is extra exciting about the journey and even pre-stone balancing, which, you know, like I said, I've only been doing it a few years, but with the other, the other art and other experiences in my life, it's a very fitting part of the story or, or my journey that has allowed me to make more sense of it, for one thing. By staying in the moment, I happen to find that I am finding myself in places like California and Scotland and you know, recently uh, France and Germany and Austria and Slovenia, I got to see all these places through connections, through this art form. What I love about it is every one of these artists that I come across, there's a really reminiscent story to be told about the journey and how the stones brought the journey to fruition. It's just an amazing thing how, you know, just something as simple and as you know, might be one of the most ancient art forms there is, but something as simple as taking the raw, most raw material you have around you on this planet and uh, just interacting with it, seeing what can happen. And with each unique individual, each unique place on this earth, and the each unique stone that is provided, there's an infinite amount of possibilities for amazing art that is linked with 
amazing experiences and people. Last week, uh, there was a guy that came up to me and was just like, yeah, this is just a great thing to see is like people need to see that there's people that can can go and just do this kind of thing, you know, set up art in the street, you know, take it down, you know, let it fall down and uh, kind of see the reactions to that, see that the life is ever changing and temporary and that you can appreciate moments like that. And that's what that's what it helps me with big time. Dunbar has always been associated with battles and war and sieges from the Battle of Dunbar and Oliver Cromwell coming up and destroying and laying the land uh, bare on his way up to conquer the rest of Scotland. Through this act of stone balancing and bringing community together, it's almost like associating Dunbar now, as John Muir did in a very positive way, with conservation and looking after the land and actually bringing people together to heal the past in some ways, especially with the Scotland, England chapters that we've all known in uh, Britain in our, in our lives. Um, yeah, I think this goes hopefully a wee bit away to bringing people together. And certainly Stone Balancing does that. Um, yeah, right across the world. That's another thing I love is just like, it seems like with all these horrible things you hear around the world and this and that, there's something about nature, you know, that's that's telling us something. It feels like it's a conversation yeah. or that through all these people, there's an understanding being understood that, you know, there are, is there's good things happening. And I think it's like, we are aspects of, you know, this planet. Maybe there is a collective consciousness as we are like Earth's consciousness. And it's our way of, you know, Earth telling us something and it's telling us through the stones. Yeah, it's, and that we are all connected, you know, everything is everything. And I think the stone balancing in the community that is uh, gathering, bringing uh, the people together who truly believe in that sort of one consciousness thing or that we are all part of the same collective, you know, we're all just human beings having an experience on Earth and, uh, you know, we should be helping each other. And, uh, Absolutely. And through this process, I think we, we are actually doing that. Yes. Yeah. And I think I noticed that, you know, we talk about reactions. I think the overall reaction I get is that kind of just positive energy feeling about, wow, there's, there's really cool things happening.